Okay, so what you guys may or may not know about these videos is I work on them every weekend. I have a full-time job. Where I'm at is last weekend, I think Mariana's put some clips in there. We got a transmission, some axle shafts, uh, anyway, some Subaru parts. They were free. Go get them. I got the hood. We're going to use it for the floor patch. What you got? Uh, Mariana's making fun of me because <laughs> I just said, this is the floorboard of your 53 Ford up there and she's like ah no scrap and I got it for nothing so and what is it from it's a hood off a of Subaru <laughs> in fact it's the same Subaru where I got those seats from that for the Suburban anyways I knew what it was <laughs> It's not funny. It's hilarious. You priced metal lately? This is a good floor. It's already painted. It's like it's like got uh, coating on it. No, so. I know, but I made a whole joke about the last time you used a Subaru hood and that there was three separate Subarus already involved in the Subaru. Yeah, but look, my my bi transport re recreational all terrain vehicle, my brat, even got it, no problem. <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> it's just funny. And so now, going on with that same theme of working on this car, a week has gone by. Let me bring you in here with the camera so you can see what has what happened. <laughs> it rained. That's probably in a day or so. Um, I'm trying to sh cut up this Chevy deal to use parts of it. I've got some other pieces, some other deal. The Ford engine that I'm using there happens to have a... The Ford engine I'm using happens to have a deal but it's, it's bigger than the Chevy one, so I'm gonna make uh, an adapter, I guess is what you'd call it, an adapter to make that Chevy parts work on the Fords. Using cutting and welding skills. Um, it's like two phases. Phase one is make the lower part work, because I've removed the hydraulic ram. And now I'm gonna go to the mechanical, and the second part would be then connecting the pedal to that first part that I made. <laughs> I've cut off this piece and this one will go inside and the reason is, is I need a bigger one for the Ford side so in reality I'm gonna make something like that to hold it on there and then the only, re the only reason I'm using this piece is it's got this really neat deal on this side which I think I can attach to the side of the Ford frame if not I've got another one I don't know I'm guessing as I go Trial and error, fit, you know, and it's, if you ever do one of these cars where you got pieces from various generations and various cars and trucks, and anyways, you'll see what I'm talking about when I get it put together, but you got to create your own. Okay. So... This piece of pipe I cut off earlier was too large. Um, so I found a smaller one, cut it off. Seems to work all right. I wish it was a little bit tighter, but I think it'll be fine for this, this thing. Now I'll go see if this is gonna work and then I'll figure out this thing. If I get the swing part between the frame and the engine block, then I can adjust it and then I just add a rod here. Now one of these rods is gonna be completely useless. I'll end up cutting that off and I have a different rod that we can weld on there um, and that will connect up to the pedal it should just be a piece of all thread that I can adjust or a turnbuckle or something I'm thinking basic I'm thinking uh, easy to work on for when it's stuck broken down falls apart in the trail is it something that I could put together pretty quick so that's what I'm kind of going for and I know I'm reusing these parts and some of that might seem foreign to some people but that's just steel it's just this old junk um, if I had a good cl a shop cleanup, I would just throw this away, thinking I'd never use it. But, you know, I kind of save weird little things like that. And uh, on this little piece, I've got the adjusting end and that, so I can make a, you know, adjusting rod, whatever. All it's got to be able to do is transfer the weight of your foot down to the clutch. Hopefully it'll go together. If it doesn't, well, then I wasted an afternoon. 
and it's not the first time or it won't be the last. Anyways, let's go see how this fits. Okay, I didn't film nothing. I don't even know if you guys can see and it don't really matter. It's my project, so this is how I ended up doing it. Uh, you can see down, let me get the camera down there. You can see down there, I've got it from the original Ford um, pivot point to this one I homemade. Welded that thing to the side, got a nut there, there's a grease zerk. And then I've got this connecting rod, clevis. It has some adjustability into it, up here to a steel plate that utilizes this as part of an old emergency brake thing, I believe. That connection there is to the original Ford connection. It comes down across this way and then it activates that. So when you push, it, it, it works. I tested it a moment ago. I'm not finished. I gotta do some more welding down here on the frame to connect that flat plate. And I got some other things to do, but it's getting dark. I wanted to show you. So we come inside here. The beauty of not having a floor is you can see what you're doing. So here's the clutch pedal. Let me zoom that. There we go. Here's the clutch pedal, brake kit pedal. And then down here is the, the Rube Goldberg system. And it doesn't move a lot. And it actually pushes quite hard on the engine, which surprised me. But anyways, let's give it a shot. I'll set you up. I've got it in first gear. I've got the wheels jacked up on some jack stands. So we're not going to lose it. I don't need it smashing into my car or anything like that. Okay, good. It's turning. Welcome back. So, as you saw, I just brought in some pipe. You're going to say, what is, what are we doing with that pipe? Well, let me explain to you what we're doing with that pipe. I went to the scrapyard this morning, was able to get these four sections. It's 24 feet, but they were already cut, which is fine. It was in a scrap pile. And I'm going to use them for Nerf bars on the side of my off-road project. The hood is just metal that I've collected for putting it on the floor. I think Mary already has a clip of that. Some of the stuff I bring home. Anyways, this is gonna be a Nerf bar here. And it's gonna be a step. I'll bring it out a little bit. Not too far down, but down a little bit so that you can get into the car and it's gonna protect uh, like a rock slider or a Nerf bar. And so I've got I've got enough to do both sides, of course, and then the kickouts, right? So I have to put a piece of pipe in here and go over to the frame up there, weld it on. Uh, this Ford frame kind of hangs low. It's this way it is. I can't do much about that. And it'll protect this rusty old rocker in the event that I'm actually using it off-road. It's not going to cave all that in. Yeah, I could buy a chrome cheapie from Taiwan. I could build my own. I've done this in the past. My green Jeeps had some. I've had other Jeeps with these. It's a little heavier than I wanted this material. Uh, what is this? Two and a half. And that's probably schedule 40. It's pretty heavy. That's It's pretty heavy duty. But it definitely is going to work. And then it also gives you a good secure area on the event that you've got to tie onto something or pull it. That you can do that on the side. For you guys who may have off-roaded a bunch, you'll understand what I'm doing. If you haven't off-roaded a bunch, you'll see them overkill, tell you you need to pull the whole car up the side of an edge or something. We got John with us. Hi. And you got, and you got me. What we're trying to do is we've kind of got this set up a little bit. The pipes I showed you before, there was some video on it. Obviously, that's too low. My jack stands aren't tall enough. But these are going to become a Nerf bar. We'll bring them up to about out there and then we're going to attach them back to the frame 
underneath on the rusty old truck frame to the rusty old car frame. I've angled them on purpose. I hope you guys can see that. I've angled them on purpose just a little ways out so that if it hits an obstacle, it kind of pushes it away from the tire. I think that'll be handy. Then have it just a little bit inset. And then I'm gonna, because I don't have any corners on this, I'm gonna cut this and probably cap it. And that way if it hits anything, it's a deflection. But we're gonna get started. John's gonna do the filming. John, you ready to take over? No. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a new cutoff wheel. Um, this is an old, old Makita. We went down to the helpful place this morning and got this. Sometimes these have directions on them on which way the rotation is. And this one appears not to. Come around here, John, so people can see what they're doing. So these, I know that most of my audience knows how this works, but if you don't, there is a specific arbor size you gotta have. Anyways, you have an arbor size that matches, and then it's just a little clamp system with a nut and a, a bolt and a washer. This is standard thread. Some of these have um, left-hand threads. This one's just a standard. And then over here, John, you can see that there's a lock. Once I find this, in the magic, there's a hole in it where it engages, and then it's as simple, just tighten. I use my uh, one size fits all. all right. I bet it, I bet it's gonna make some sparks when it starts. It's self clearing. Sam. <laughs> oh yeah, let's get a cord and self clearance that thing. <laughs> Okay, so I was told the other day that our microphones aren't very good. Or, well, we're not using them right now. We've had trouble when they were in the shop in the close proximity to the, to the metal. They would cut in and out, so we have not been using them. And I was told, look at the camera when you speak so that you can hear me. So I, I'm going to work on that. It's, it's become frustrating for Mary because I'm like, whoop, you're doing whatever I do. So you got to follow me, John. I'm doing my best. This is <laughs> like the second time I've cameraed. Well, once we get going here, we'll set up the tripod and avoid the rain. You want to give me my headphones? Yeah. This thing is a squeaky, so we're, uh, you're plug up. And then I have some safety glasses. Here. I was telling John he could get a haircut, and he's like, I don't know. What? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's, let's self-clearance this thing. Now, you don't, you don't want to be in front of it in case it explodes. We'd rather be to the side. Great, trip the breaker. Gonna start out fabulous today. Isn't your breaker over there? Yeah, sometimes there's a GFI on that side. Yeah. All right, so come on over. We'll talk about this real quick. Your storage bench? So this 48 Ford, I'd mentioned it in the very first video and some of you have seen it in the background. I feel like I'm yelling because I'm wearing earplugs. Oh, well, you are. Um, look in here. Straight six, it had gotten some water in it. It had gotten some water in it. We pulled the head and number five cylinder. We finally got it to rotate a little, but it seizes as soon as you stop it. So I, I'm thinking is we're gonna, when we get on this, John, I think we're gonna fix the brakes, fill the crankcase with oil, maybe like overfill it a little bit, and we'll pull it, and just let it lube everything, run everything. We don't have a starter for this. This is a project. This had once belonged to my little brother in 1994. He got killed in a car wreck. I've kept this all these years. It used to run. I moved it from storage building to storage building when I was, you know, these kids have never seen this run, but it did run. And so this is kind of down the road project. Just keep you guys interested. Like I say, I've got stuff hidden all over, but uh, if you had watched the first video, then you know that it, it has some emotional attachment, but it's, it's a project. Uh, Anyways, let's flip the breaker and move on. That one, I'll bet. Very good.
get out of here, you. Uh, so whether or not this got into the video, I sometimes make videos in Mariana for time or stupidity on my part or like that where I didn't swear, but I felt like it. Smashed my finger all to hell. Anyways, um, I got these from the junkyard, scrap yard, recycling yard. I paid 60 bucks for this pipe. That's what it came out for is poundage. 60 bucks worth of pipe just to make some Nerf bars. Some of you guys might think, oh, well, you can buy them. You can buy them. You're right, I could. And they'd be several hundred dollars more. See how thick this is? I, I think that's more than Schedule 40. It's a workout. Bunch of metal dust. Well, see, right here, a piece of exhaust pipe. So, the diameter, and then there's the schedule, which is the thickness. This, like I say, it was, it's by the pound. It's way overkill for what I needed, but... I won't have to worry about it bending or tweaking <laughs> once I weld it all on there. So I want this first one to be, oh, I don't know, wherever I put it, it'll be in the way of something behind that deal and above here. So let's say I want to be back. Oh, I don't know. Let's do six inches on the front. This one's got items in the way too. So let's say we want to do... 10 inches on the back. Six and 10. You guys on YouTuber land, remember that. Oh, I forgot the pipe. Oh man, I just dumped all that dust in my grinder. Motor. I hope that piece of junk works. Okay, I'll have to lift that up just a little bit. Oh no, an excuse to get a better grinder. Yeah. Well, this one's pretty close to 10. I wonder if that thing's going to keep trying to roll away on me. Oh, man, this is some precision right there, boy. Wow. I should quit my job and become a full-time YouTube guy. You have, like, 200 subscribers. That's right. Speaking of which, let's get more subscribers. So if you guys are watching this content and you think that, well, this guy's an idiot, you're right. If you're interested in the projects I'm doing, we got a lot of good things coming up. We've got, uh, well, winter, I'll have to be honest with you, we're probably going to slow down a little bit on the projects. This one we're going to take to an off road park as soon as I get it finished. Uh, the Suburban, it's probably done until I put a clutch in it. I used used parts. Uh, the Capri, if you hadn't seen the video on that, we already took it over the mountain. It was a great trip. The Wheelies Jeep in the back, the M38. Um, it's got some issues with the transfer case leak oil. That's nothing deal. We might get that out and go. With this? Yeah, I don't know. I can only get one there at a time. My rat rod, there's been videos on that. That's pretty much stored for the winter. The motorhome races are over. Uh, all that's left now is the work. So we're gonna go ahead and get this buzz together. But if you hadn't subscribed, please subscribe, share, like, comment. I enjoy the comments. We actually look at them. We're such a small channel. We can look at them and answer still. And uh, we're hoping to do some better and better things, but it costs money, you know, and I don't need to lecture anybody on money because you guys are all in the same boat as me. It's money. It's what it takes to get things done. And I can get some of that from YouTube once I get big time sponsors and stuff. But until that happens, we're going to keep plugging away on what we got going on. Okay, so I will teach you something about welding today, my little knowledge. You can see I got a little bit of weld in there on both sides. Check. I'm not the best welder in the world. My eyes are getting old. Once upon a time, I was better. So when I got a, a deal like this, this gap I was telling you about, basically I'm going to weld a couple of beads in here and build this up and then just do a cover pass or a hot pass. And that's going to be fine for what I'm doing. Is it structural? Yes and no. Is it correct? No. I should have ground more. I was getting tired doing that. So, so I'm going to let that cool. See how it's... I well, start on one side and work it in. I start on this side and letting it cool off. Now it'll come together here real quick.
So technically that's done. I mean, it's together. But if I wanted to make it look real good, hand caught fire <laughs> but let <laughs> you see the ideas I should have came down here more but my glove was too hot it's pretty hot anyways I get that covered over is it perfect no I know I know on some of the welds you guys see you're like oh god this guy's terrible yeah uh, what are you gonna do you know Let's show the people what we got. It looks better than in light real life. And it does on camera. It looks worse on camera. It don't. It turned out like we wanted. I'm thinking about cutting this. You know, I hold the camera like this, cutting an angle back now that I got it on there. So we'll film that in a second. Now you add a grinder wheel? Roasted! Like all on it. Some Earl. All. Some Earl. So all stops leaks. That stuff will it's probably good for saw blades. It's sticky. That'll stop the leaks giving leaks. Look at I never even cut the top off of that. Who was that? The neighbor dog behind us. Oh, this doesn't sound like Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Yeah, oh, now you've sealed up that crack forever. <laughs> won't leak ever. Wah, 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 wah. Oh yeah. You know, I really ought to patent that Nerf bar design. You know, forget the corner wraparound ones that are so popular. Go with the... The rock breaker? The wedge, the fish, the fish mouth. You know, I mean, what? I mean, in that oil. I mean, look, the braid is practically brand new. I mean, wh why have I not been using that forever to cut with saw blades? Yeah, but it says stops leak, and look at that, it leaked a little. Oh, it stops slips. You see how I didn't slip off. I mean, it's brilliant. Uh, all right, so we're kind of getting late in the day. I might just call this a quit. It's also supposed to rain in a few minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make the other one, get them both to the same point, and then I'll probably have to cut some metal and make some caps for it. And 
this end here I don't I don't know that I want to do the same I might just put a cap on the end I might just leave it because then I can put a hook on there and tow a guy out of the mud with it it's better than hooking it here nah, that'd be funny to rip the door off <laughs> There's a little fire inside. Turns out that oil I was using, the stop leak, good for saw blades, not good for welding. That's okay, it's coming along though, it's coming along. Turns out that's a weld you only see when it's upside down. As long as the car stays this way, nobody will ever see that. Yeah, your ugly welds go on the bottom. Duh. Take the hammer. Ta-da! Now you see how that you see how that now could be welded a lot easier. Don't do this in your shorts. Go put on jeans. Your your hairs will get sparkled. Yeah, who needs to shave or wax when you could just right, burn yeah. it off? sand that I should be able to make it smooth that's redneckery at its finest right there mm -hmm. 